For our first video of section 4.2, we're going to take a look at sigma notation and summation formulas. So if I asked you to solve this question, we have a tank being filled with water using a pump that slows down as it runs. The table gives the rate at which the pump pumps at 10 minute intervals. If the tank is initially empty, estimate how much water is in the tank after 90 minutes. So different ways that students might go about this is to simply say that I'm going to take the first value in each interval. I'm going to take each of those times 10 because they're 10 minute intervals. So if I take the first value and I take each of those times 10, that's going to give me an estimate. You might instead say, I'm going to take the ending value. So at the end of the first 10 minutes, it's 40 and then 38 and 35 and so on. And you would take each of those times 10 minutes since it's gallons per minute. Either of these would be perfectly fine estimates. Um, so this one's taking the left endpoint, and this one's taking the right endpoint. And then there's also one where you could find the midpoint. So use 41 and use 39.5 and so on, and then take each of those midpoints times 10. So those are different ways that you might go about it. Um, some also just find the average, um, but that doesn't really fit into where we're going with this. So we'll look at these three, left, right, and midpoint. Before we return to questions like that with the pump, let's just refresh our memories, or maybe you've never seen it before, um, of sigma notation. So you might also see it called summation notation. It's called sigma notation because this is the symbol sigma. And we have down here, I is the index or sum of summation, which usually is just called the index. And then you have the upper bound of N. And what it's saying is for the first term through the nth term for A sub I, take the first term plus the second term plus the third term all the way up to the nth term. So it will start at one and end at n or start at whatever the first, the lower bound and the upper bound are. So let's do a couple of examples just to make sure we get what's going on here. This says, take the summation of i as i goes from one to six. So that means we're gonna take one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. And again, we're doing that because they're telling us just to take i. So i starts at one and ends at six. So all we would have to do is add those together to find the sum. Then the next one says as j, the summation as j goes from three to seven of j squared. So that means we're taking three squared plus four squared plus five squared plus six squared plus seven squared. And we're going to add all of those values together. So again, you can take your time going through that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put the sum there. But again, that's sigma notation. So sigma tells us where to start, where to end, and what the function is doing. Now let's go in reverse. If we have a sequence of numbers that is being added together, or we're finding the sum of a sequence of numbers, that's called a series. And if we're trying to find the sum of the series, how could I rewrite this first one? So what we're doing is looking for the pattern. So obviously it looks like we're taking two times some number plus three. So that's happening each time. So two times some number plus three. And the number is over eight, but the numerator is going from one to eight. So that means I is going from one to eight, and it's just going to be I over eight. So we've got two times I over eight, plus three. So that represents the exact same series that is written up here. Now let's take a look at the second one. This one is one half, one fourth, one eighth. This is like two to the first, two squared, 
2 to the third, 2 to the fourth, and it looks like the last value is 2 to the seventh. So how am I going to write this? The summation as i goes from 1 to 7, because 7 is the last one, of 1 over 2 to the ith power. So that is going to be the same as the series. We're going to end by taking a look at some properties and some summation formulas that you will want to know as we work through sigma notation. The first two are very straightforward. The first one says, hey, if you have a constant in front of each value in your summation, it's okay to take the constant out front. The second one says, if you're finding the sum or difference, that it's okay to evaluate each part of that sum or difference individually and then add or subtract those from one another. And the last one uh, we're going to talk about in a little more detail. This one says if you have the summation as i goes from 1 to n, so let's say it's 4, of c, where c is some constant, so let's say that's 5. Instead of taking 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is what this tells me to do, because 1, 2, 3, 4, which of course is 20, it's easier just to take 5 times n, which is 20. So I'm going to get the same result, but obviously it helps to know that specific rule. The other three are all summation formulas, and if you haven't learned these, I suggest writing them down and keeping them where you can see them as you're working through the rest of this chapter because you're going to see them all through the rest of this chapter and really all through the rest of your mathematical journey. The first one is the summation from 1 to n of i, then the summation of 1 to n of i squared, n of i cubed, and notice each of these is written in relationship to the value of n. Now, what you have to be careful of on these is if you'll notice, each one starts at 1. So if you're going to use these, you have to have a summation that begins at 1, or you have to get a little uh, math trickery going. So let's take a look at these two examples, and we'll maybe discover some of that math trickery as we go. For the first, we have the summation from 1 to 6, so it starts at 1, which is good, of 5i plus 3. Now, could I just take 5 times 1 plus 3, and then 5 times 2 plus 3, and 5 times 3 plus 3, and so on? Yes, I could. Um, this is, we want to practice using summation formulas. So 5i plus 3 means I'm going to use this rule that says it's okay to break this up, uh, and I'm going to use this rule that says it's okay to take the 5 out front. So I'm going to take 5, the summation as i goes from 1 to 6 of i, plus the summation as i goes from 1 to 6 of 3. Now I have a 5 here, and now I have i. So i is this one, n times n plus 1 over 2. So n is 6, so this is 6 times 6 plus 1, which is 7, divided by 2. All of that's going to be taken times 5. And then I've got a constant, so now I'm going to use this rule that says if you have the summation from 1 to n of c, it's c times n. So that's 3 times 6 in this case. So now I have 5 times 42 divided by 2, or 21. So 5 times 21, 105, plus 18 and 105 plus 18 is 123. So I found the sum without having to find each value and adding them together. Now looking at the next one, you might be tempted to go straight for this rule. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you'll notice, this doesn't start at 1. So you can certainly do some trickery to make this work. The easiest way to do this, and it's not the way they show you in the book, but it makes sense that if I want to go from 3 to 7, that I could find the summation as j goes from 1 to 7 of j squared, 
and subtract the summation as j goes from 1 to 2 of j squared. So this is one way to do it. Uh, the other way uh, is a little more mathy right here in the middle, um, but we're going to go with this. So if I do it this way, this is 1 to 7, so now I'm going to be doing using this function twice, and the first time I'm using it with a 7. So this is 7 times 8 times 2 times 7 plus 1, which is 15, divided by 6. And I'm going to evaluate that, and I'm going to subtract, and now notice I'm going to use 2 as n. So this is 2, 2 plus 1, 3, 2 times 2 plus 1, 5, divided by 6. So we determined this before was 135, but let's just make sure. Um, this side, 2 times 3 is 6, so that cancels, so this is minus 5. And here I can also do some reduction. I can take a 3 out of here and a 3 out of here. And I can take a 2 from here and a 2 from here, and I have 7 times 4 times 5, which is 7 times 20, or 140. 140 minus 5 is 135. So we did get the same solution, we just had to do uh, a little bit more because we had to uh, be smarter than the summation formula. Coming up next, we are trying to work our way to Riemann sums and definite integrals. So this is really just a lot of building our knowledge or building our understanding of exactly what's going on. But up next, we're going to work on approximating the area under a curve using rectangles.